Let's talk for a moment about sequences. If you define a sequence, by default we give it a cache size, but a lot of people panic about the cache size and therefore define their sequences as no cache because they're worried about the term, you know, caching means memory consumption. But let me approach this from a different tack by saying a cached sequence is not cached. Let me explain. If I create a sequence called my sequence here, by default we get a cache size of 20. And that's the default, and it's been there probably, I think, as far back as Oracle 7. You get a cache size of 20. Now, whenever you use the term cache, that often rings alarm bells in people's heads. They think, oh, a cache is an area of memory. You've said a cache size is 20. Therefore, somewhere in my SGA, I've now allocated 20 pieces of memory for, for this sequence number. That's all well and good, but you know, people read on the internet that large case sizes are good when it comes to high frequency, high transaction rate environments. And they think, well, a large case size would be better for me, but if I set a sequence size of 100, 500, 1,000, even larger, well, that worries me because isn't that gonna burn a huge chunk of memory in my SGA? And the answer to that is no, it's not. The definition of a case sequence is not about consuming cached amounts of memory. The way cache sequences work is a nomination of how often we need to come back to the data dictionary to keep our sequence metadata up to date. If I go look at user sequences, you can see we have another column called last number. This is effectively the next number that will be used when the database metadata is updated in the data dictionary. We can consume numbers up to the size of the cache without having to do that. So for example here, I've not touched anything so far, I've not done any queries to my sequence, and we have the last number is one and the case size is 20. I now do select sequence next vowel from dual, and we see that that updates the metadata to become 21. That says I can now consume sequence values from one through to 20, and when I get to 20, which is the exhausted cache in memory, then I go back and I update my data dictionary, that'll go from 21 to 41 and so on. So in my SGA is just a single piece of memory which has a counter for what number this sequence number is currently up to. If I create a sequence with cache of 1000, I'm not burning a thousand pieces of memory. All I've got is one little entry in memory with the current count. I'll count the values one through 1000 and when I hit 1000, I'll bump it up to become 1001 to 2000 each time going back to the data dictionary once I've exhausted those 1000 values. The size of the cache does not change in any way the amount of memory the sequence is using in the SGA. It's going to just be a couple of bytes to indicate that counter. Ultimately, what I'm trying to convince you of is that there is no damage to using a cache. And as long as you don't veer away from that, even if you just go with default of 20, as long as you're on 19.10 or above, we will manage the case size for you. If you're using that sequence very, very rarely, we'll leave the case size at 20. If you're using that sequence very, very aggressively, we will dynamically adjust the case size upwards in order to not keep hitting the data dictionary. I've got a blog post, I'll link in the description, which shows uh, some more details about that. I suppose I'm trying to convince you you don't need to change your sequences to no cache. No cache is generally going to be a bad idea for sequences. It's going to go to a lot of data dictionary contention. Leave the defaults in there, and as long as you're on a current release of the database, we'll manage the caching for you, and you don't need to worry about SGA memory.